Thank you, Dr. Angita and Sahani sir. Good evening, good afternoon, and good morning. This is the 1348th day of continuous webinar conducted by International Forum for Promoting Homeopathy. We welcome all to this session. Today, our guest is Dr. Suresh Singh Badhadia. And let us begin the session with one minute silent prayer. Thank you all. As you all know that International Forum for Promoting Homeopathy comprises of homeopathy lovers, homeopathy students, and homeopathy doctors. And we have three sessions in a row. Uh, the first session is already our uh, today uh, from 7 to 8 p.m. And 8 to 9 p.m. we have our international session in English and 9 to 10 a local language session in Malayalam. We have guests from different parts of the world, already uh, doctors as well as personalities from different fields. I was talk uh, in this forum uh, from 65 countries and made different uh, uh, talk on different subject. Uh, and uh, we have a lot of research presentation uh, in this forum about homeopathy. Uh, some people uh, say, still say that homeopathy is pseudoscience, but we have eminent doctors on the calibre of Dr. Suresh Singh and Badoria and so many doctors we are about to prove that it is a sign, it is the best scientific system and the most advanced scientific system in the world. So uh, let me introduce today's our guest, uh, Dr. Surya Singh Bedoria, and he, he is a, he is working as an assistant professor, Department of Homeopathy Pharmacy, Pearl University uh, of Research, Pearl University, Vadodara, Gujarat. And uh, he has completed his MD and pursuing a PhD now. And he, he, he is a person who has an objective uh, to make positive impact in uh, his field of activity, leading to organizational growth by creative application of his values-based uh, convictions and uh, professional divinity by putting uh, his all efforts into the organization where he can work, grow along with the organization. This is a wonderful uh, thought from Dr. Suresh Singh Badoria. And he has completed his MD and, uh, and now doing a PhD in Vinayaga Mission Research Foundation at the University of Salem. And he has uh, uh, presented so many uh, excellent presentation in this forum. And he has published a uh, lot of articles uh, nationally as well as internationally and in uh, very good journals uh, and uh, he has uh, attended so many sessions so many workshop uh, for homeopathy he is a person uh, really works for the betterment of homeopathy as well as uh, make it uh, public um, uh, popular among public so today is one of the best subjects he's about to talk uh, that is nano particles in homeopathy as you all know that uh, uh, our medicines are uh, not approved in that way earlier, but nowadays it is a uh, lot of uh, research work is going on that said, let us see what uh, Dr. Suresh Singh has to say at this uh, session. Uh, we welcome proudly to you. Welcome, Doctor. Thank you so much, sir. My voice is audible, sir? Yes, everything fine. Okay, sir. Uh, so I am going to share my screen, sir. Yes, yes. Is it visible, sir? Uh, it is not at uh, shared. You may please. Uh, yes, yes, it's coming, coming. Yes, it's coming. Okay, now we can see. Okay. You go ahead. You, you can go ahead with your presentation. Uh, now, today we started this uh, topic. It is basically not a topic. It is a very huge subject. Uh, which we are going to discuss in this forum for uh, our knowledge, for our upgradation and for homeopathy also. Uh, previously, we had uh, very good cases in skin, in dermatology with the excellent constitutional and some other medicines, which is in high dilutions. So ultimately, why this results came in homeopathy only? not in other sciences. The reason is 
uh, our medicine preparations, the sphere of action, and because of this invisible minute massless particles. These are nanoparticles. Because when you supposed to prescribe Stephys agria, uh, Natramur, and uh, Ignatia myra, so when this medicines are supposed to give in the ultra high dilution to any person to any particular disease condition for any time interval, so how they will act on the mental plane? That is our main objective. So nowadays. It is very, very difficult to explore and to just reflect this part to the modern science because they have no such uh, theory, they have no such expectation and they have no such scenario. So that's why today we are going to discuss this. Uh, by discussing all these points, we are also going to conclude that how the homeopathy is so beautiful to not only cure the disease to also modify the human life so what are nanoparticles so just start our presentation uh, nanoparticles are generally it is a very minute particle a massless particle in which it is a uh, range of that particular particle is between 1 to 100 nanometer so this is a range of that particle size. What it is, it lies in between 1 to 100 nanometer. It is a SI unit. How we determine this particle? Because there are n number of particles. So which one is nano? Which one is not a nano? Which one is a bigger particle? So we are going to determine or we are going to differentiate these particles on the basis of their size. This term is generally used by, by a certain matter or the fibrous structure or so many dimensions. At the lowest range, the metal particles are always smaller than one nanometer. That's why they are said to be a atomic cluster instead of this nanoparticles. So generally you can see these particles exist in everywhere, in every matter, in the form of this very minute atomic clusters. So afterward, now we will see how this atomic uh, clusters and the structures may form. In the next slide, now you can see, uh, this is a picture which shows the cluster of that particular atomic structure of that particular matter in that particular bond. So you can see there are n number of atoms. They all are unite to each other. They make a very strong bond. And there is a bond in between the n number of atoms. Uh, either they are single bond, double bond, triplet. So it depends on the nature of atom. It depends on the nature of compound. It depends on the nature of matter. So there are n number of things which may affect uh, this type of bonding. Now you can see it is a just group or cluster like appearance. There are n number of atoms. Similarly, the nanoparticles are also to be like this. They are not a very single structure or the substances. They are going to make that particular structure in a different dimensions, at a different wavelength, at the different intensity, at the different media. So it depends on the nature of solvent system. It depends on the nature of media. It depends on the nature of that particular substance or the matter. So this, this is a union of particles. Now, somewhere when the temperature and the pressure may influence on that particular structure, which is present in the cluster form, so the, they may get affected. Like if the more temperature is there, so there is loosening the bond is going to break down or there is a denaturation of the bond. So they will have a gap. 
in between the corresponding particles or the atomic structure or the massless particles but if the pressure is more temperature is less so what happens they are going to unite in a very strong bond without any gap and they form a very strong cluster like arrangement just like a solid substance so the temperature and pressure may also get influence in this atomic or the particle size or a dimensions or the atomic structures this is very very important because to know the characteristic properties of atom we should also know about the general atomic structure what are the different shape and size how they are going to arrange how they form a crystalline like arrangement so that is a very very mandatory and these are very very essential for knowing the characteristic property of nanoparticles next you can see now this nanoparticles are differentiate in a microparticles like a very fine particles between 1 to 1000 micron so it is again a si unit and it is vary as per a different size suppose if you talk about 100 nanometer so the size is different again 200 uh, 200 nanometer if uh, they vary from 100 nanometer to 50 nanometer they vary from 200 nanometer so they may differentiate and classified as per the different sizes on other hand you can also see their physical and chemical properties are also to be differ with different size with different nature of solvent and with different method of their preparation also suppose if they are synthesized by the physical method if suppose they are to be synthesized by the chemical method if suppose they are to be synthesized by the natural or some other uh, chemical pre method so the property of that particular particle is also differ so this is very common and but obvious but we have to know about this because whatever you create the nano structures they are differ to each other every particle size are not a same they are not to be a similar similarly our medicines are also just like this particles please try to understand today in this uh, whole presentation we are also going to compare the nano particle as just similar with the homeopathy because homeopathy is not a, a magic effect it is not only the placebo effect it is due to this particles only so please understand this this is a science and art why art because the way of our presentation of case taking that is very different so that that's why it is the artistic approach and why it is a science because of this structures so these are the nano particles now these particles are also differ in our different medicine because as we know the homeopathic medicines are prepared by a various sources like animal kingdom plant kingdom mineral kingdom sarcodes nozodes in pondribilia vegetable so there are n number of sources so definitely the property the physical property and the chemical property of that particular sources are also different so when we synthesize this material by this different sources so they also possess a different property so they have a particular memory in later and in some other slide we will also talk about the memory of that particular particle so generally these are the memory of our nano structures this memory are act like a medicinal property so on beside this you can also see there are n number of structures in first image you can see these are in diffused form where somewhere it is in a cluster but generally there is a large gap and these are the diffusion 
on the second image you can see these are not to be a more diffuse they are in the cluster form so see the difference in between the a and b image okay in the same nanometer in the same size dimension but the arrangement the pattern of that particles are also differ similarly our medicines are also going to act in a different way so because of this phenomena only the third image you can see in a same wavelength or in a same dimension you can see it is just like a diamond shape a flower so it is again a different variety and again in the last phase you can see it is just like a very uh, solid and cluster what we can say a virus shape where you can determine a regular margins so see a different dimensions okay in a different uh, this what we can say uh, arrangement of this particles so what it indicates it indicates that every particle has some memory now what it is it is a homeopathy our medicine our this massless particles which are prepared by the pulverization or what we can say the potentization so they carry that particular memory of that particular source now we cannot say the medicine and drug only the source because ultimately the drug is also going to prepared by that particular source so they are going to combine they are going to mix and then they are going to act on that particular system in the living entity that we should understand how the homeopathy differ how these particles are going to act so this is very very important to know so here you can see the different images the different arrangement the different uh, in their structures either they are crystalline or the diffuse now moving towards next slide now according to iupac it is a international union of pure and applied chemistry for any type of this matter and the particle size the iupac uh, description and the justification plays a major role because we have to justify scientifically so uh, according to iupac uh, generally it defines the nanoparticles in the dimensions of this uh, this is a unit where it lies in between 1 to 10 to the power minus 9 and 1 into 10 to the power minus 7 so this is so micro very very micro emulsions very very minute invisible so this is in general a range so this range is given by the iupsc so suppose if you are in a conference and, and suppose somebody ask you that uh, you said homeopathy is a nano theory and it is based on the nano particle so uh, tell me what is the range of this nano particle so this is as per the iupsc so by this justification we can also going to conclude our pathy as a scientific generally what happened we are afraid to other nomenclature and the taxonomical classification this is my personal experience as a teacher and as a faculty of this homeopathic pharmacy uh, we should always give reference value from other uh, what we can say other stream and other sciences also so this will give you the distinguishing this will give you the mode of classification this will give you the exact uh, uh, justification of that particular particle and that particular matter so this will include in our pathy so it is very very important now another way we can also see what are the different types as we know every matter every structures are dividing into the two different parts what are the two different parts the organic matter and inorganic matter the organic particles and inorganic particles so what are the organic these are generally non these are nature these are not a man made these are by the natural form so these are the organic one inorganic which are man made so they are to be a creator 
so these are organic matter so similarly the nanoparticles also classified as organic nanoparticles and inorganic nanoparticles in organic nanoparticles you can see this structures so they are just like a polymeric nanoparticles they are by the polymers okay so another you can see the nano structure in the lipid carrier so generally a lipid is not synthesized outside it is within the living entity okay so similarly this lipid particles are also to be a nano particles solid lipid nano particles liposomes nano emulsions so these all are the different varieties of organic nano particles got it my point in inorganic nano particles you can see the silver nano particles iron gold calcium phosphate quantum so what are this ultimately our homeopathic medicines are also prepared by the mineral group in mineral group we again have this category organic inorganic again we have metallic and non metallic compounds so suppose if the medicines are zincum our medicines are plumbum met ferrum metallicum so generally these are the inorganic nano particles the massless particles the minute particles which are not to be visible by our naked eye but they exist in that particular solvent media and they carry the medicinal property along with the memory of water silica hypothesis and then they are going to act on the human or living entity as a whole so this is very 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 important thing how the homeopathy how we correlate this topic with the homeopathy because food our topic is nano particles in homeopathy nano technology in homeopathy so how we will correlate this so this is a justification of this particular knowledge or the nano structures in a different sources of homeopathic sciences so what about this organic as we know our living body our living entity prepare so many enzymes juices and some other fatty material so ultimately when we give this nano structures nano particles in ultra high dilutions in any living entity at any time interval so they are going to act on that particular structures which is embedded or already exist in a living entity that's why we can say our homeopathy is going to act on the constitution why the homeopathy is going to act only the constitution temperament diathesis why the other pathy are only act on the very particular organ or the viscera of any living entity so this is the explanation that why our homeopathy is a holistic approach why it is not to be a very local and materialistic i am not against anatomy and the physiology but we have to understand where is the cure got it my point that's why when you prescribe any medicine on the mental plane so it act as a general it doesn't mean that it is only act on the mind it act on the whole body from mind from head to foot but ultimately your selection is on the constitutional ground that's why we can say the medicine which is going to uh, be selected on this mental pictures so they, they act very beautifully but it doesn't mean that in some local melodies as per the organ on of medicine and their language if suppose there is a burn there is some injury and suppose if we prescribe cantharis apis mellifica arnica so they are not going to act uh, holistic no if suppose they are going to given in a concentration in a tincture form so they act locally materialistic not on the dynamic plane just like nano action but when they are to be synthesized in a high dilution ultimately when we synthesize this 
higher dilution from mother tincture to 1m 10m or 200 so they are just having a action on dynamic plane with the holistic approach just like a nano so this is also a process of synthesis so even though in potentization we also select and synthesize this material so again potentization is a scientific it is not uh, just art now what are the morphology of this structure again very very important point to determine the structure the morphology plays a major role in a science okay that's why we can say the vital force is a dynamic because there is no a uh, definite and any structure okay so what is the structure of this particle so they are differ in a different shape size it depends again it depends on the physical and the chemical property of that particular matter or the compound somewhere they are in a rod shape long elongated somewhere they are in a chain just like they attach together and make a big and a huge chain somewhere they are decayed drill and nanoparticles somewhere they are diffuse somewhere they are having a gap somewhere they are in a star form which we can say the nano stars somewhere they are a nano flowers just like to evolve somewhere they are the nano fibers nano boxes a cubic shape so these are the different structures different different morphology of that particular particle so it depends on their properties suppose if we talk about the nano particle of ferrum metallicum so it may vary as zincum metallicum it may vary as the calendula officinalis it may vary as compared to the some other medicine so these are as per the different sources different physical different chemical property clear now these nano particles are generally also to be influenced by the environmental conditions their growth their unity their structures everything is depending on the environmental conditions also that's why while taking homeopathic medicine uh, there should be one inclusivity the inclusivity is whenever you took any homeopathic ultra i am not talking about only mother tincture all high dilutions whenever you took any homeopathic medicine any type of medicine where when they are to be synthesized at that dynamic level so the external environment the effect of temperature the effect of pressure the effect of that particular environmental condition so they all are going to affect this structures got it my points that's why in the organ on of medicine in homeopathy dr hanniman always said this the while uh, taking and while administering this uh, homeopathic medicines uh, there are intrinsic factor and somewhere there are extrinsic factor the intrinsic factor are our action of medicine and the extrinsic factor are our all temperature and pressure and all this compounds and components which are related with your environmental condition the condition for the patient or that particular individual so this is very very important and again it is related with our homeopathy because this particle carry that particular memory which is going to act on that particular system so they are not going to be affected clear so this is very very important there is some another hypothesis the hypothesis is regarding with the cell memory suppose if your cells are to be in a union and in that particular structure so they all are going to talk each other this is called a cell talk not like a mobile phone talk so every cell every tissues are going to have that particular interaction this is a interaction of that particular size that particular particle because your cell is also to be considered as this structure so similarly our medicines which are at that high dilution which carry and possess that medicinal property so
so they also have interaction to each other and this type of interaction depends on so many extrinsic and the intrinsic factor and this type of interaction works on that particular cellular and tissue level so this is called cell to cell talk medicine to medicine talk every medicines talk to each other it is very very rare how we justify this this is a science this is a science of matter this is an explanation of the nanostructures because if they they are not going to possess this property so ultimately they are not going to act on that particular system on that particular matter on that particular viscera so that we have to know how this particle are going to interact with each other and how they are going to act in our human body so this is a nanostructure next variations now as we know there are different different forms and the nature of this nanostructure in a different matters generally they are to be used in a different disease and gross pathological conditions just like anti cancerous anti cancer drugs vaccination biopolymers bio compatibility biodegradability nano cellulose so generally what it is what are these variations generally in covid also we see a uh, n number of variants so this is just because of the genetic mutations and uh, this transformation and the uh, mitosis and the cell division of that particular pathogen and the bacteria similarly in this nanoparticles this are also shown their different action and property on different matter on different system on different cellular on different tissue level so it is because of such different chemical and physical property now the breakdown and the lysis of this matter and this atomic structure and this nanoparticles are basically enhances the biosynthesis the compatibility degradability of the cellular even in our tissues in our microstructures to make a normal system in living entity so what are these when these are going to act in a different variant then they are going to be used for the medical purpose either they are some cancer or malignancy either they are for immunity boost up just like vaccination prophylactic so we can use this nanostructure so what is the advantage of this the biggest advantage of this is there is less chances of adr adverse drug reaction unwanted drug reaction so whenever we use this in a high dilution in that particular disease condition the other somatic cells are not to be dead if they are not to be dead so your immunity is more strong generally nowadays when people used to take the higher concentrated drug in a cancer and in some other diseases so when there is a chemotherapy and some other mode of treatment so afterward there is a complete death and loss of the somatic cells also and it decreases the immunity and the power and the capability of that particular individual also so this is a greatest uh, it is very disadvantage but this nano structures are going to preserve that particular entity that particular cellular structure also going to damage and kill the enemy and some other bacteria and the pathogen and that particular abnormal cellular division and also maintain that dynamic system so similarly while prescribing any type of homeopathic medicine when they are to be in a ultra high dilution so they always 
cure the disease. They always increase your immunity. They always going to act from mind to foot on all spheres, on each and every ground. So this is very, very important to know to link this variant and different structures and forms of these nanoparticles in homeopathy. Suppose when we talk about metastasis, metaplasia, and gross pathological condition. So generally we think about arsenical album, we think about carbovage, we think about some other constitutional medicine, condurango. So they are a different deep acting medicine. So how they are going to act? They are going to act on that particular system by this memory only, by this nanostructures only. So it is justifiable that homeopathy is both scientific and artic, artistic approach to preserve the vitality of that living organism. Gotten my point? So this is all about the relation of homeopathy with different variants of nanoparticles. Now, moving towards the production. Ultimately, how you can create these structures? How you can synthesize this structure? So, ultimately, there are different methodologies to prepare these nanoparticles, nanostructures by condensation, attrition, chemical precipitation, ionic method, implantation of this atomic and the molecular structures in that particular solvent media at different temperature and pressure. The main and the main important one is hydrothermal synthesis. Generally, it is related with temperature effect on the water. So ultimately, we are going to break and having the lysis of that water molecule in our compound, in our drug entity then we can going to change their physical, chemical and their some other property. So that's why they are going to act and prepare and make their different atomic molecular structures. So this is a nano production. Whenever you are going to synthesize any material, what are the key points? First, change in color. Second, change in consistency. Third, change in odor also. Sometimes the smell may also change before treatment, after treatment, before synthesis, after synthesis of that particular solvent of that particular uh, substance also. Reactivity, pH, specific gravity, calorific value. So this all are going to change before treatment, after treatment. So whenever you are going to synthesize this nanostructure. So before treatment, the all physical and chemical properties are different as compared to after treatment. After treatment, you can see there are so many changes in their physical and chemical property of that particular compound. So this is the production and synthesis of the nanoparticles. They are generally to be created from any solid liquid materials, including metals and some other non-metallic structures, even though by some plant extract, you can also synthesize the nanoparticles. So every time it is not uh, mandatory that we have to be go and we have to be prepare a metallic structures only, no. It is the some other inorganic compounds, but by the organic like the plant extract uh, and some other uh, juicy and the what we can say the raw material, you can also going to synthesize the nanoparticles in that particular solvent system. So this is very, very commonly seen. Now, next you can see 
द मैकेनिकल प्रोसेस द मैकेनिकल इज जनरली रिलेटेड विद द फोर्स इन एक्सेलरेशन सो दिस मैकेनिकल प्रोसेस इज गोइंग टू रिड्यूस द साइज पार्टिकल वेन एवर द साइज इज गोइंग टू रिड्यूस मोर फ्रॉम मास टू मास लेस देन दिस इज द मैकेनिकल प्रोसेस सो दिस मैकेनिकल प्रोसेस इज गोइंग टू सिंथेसाइज दिस नैनो स्ट्रक्चर एट द वेरी माइन्यूट एंड मासलेस पार्टिकल विथ सम मेमोरी so they are to be defer and classified under the mechanical incorporation or the mechanical process got it my point suppose if we do trituration so this is also mechanical we are going to do this force in acceleration there are different forces act while doing trituration and pulverization what are the forces gravitational force centrifugal force centripetal force gravitational force and mechanical force magnetic force electromagnetic force these all are going to act in during potentization trituration so when we do this trituration so it is a mechanical incorporation this mechanical incorporation facilitate this mass particle to massless particle from solute to solvent to emulsion to micro emulsion to massless structures these are nano structures so how this trituration and the process of pulverization is scientific because it is going to convert this mass to massless particles so that they can act on this dynamic plane so this is in general phenomena of this mechanical system next is breakdown of biopolymers so what it is it is generally a lysis of like cellulose starch carbohydrate so this all are the process of lysis so when we break down this biopolymers which are already exist in any living entity in any living body so when they are going to break down now they have a different structure because they are just going to have a different scenario so when this compound is to be break so they have a different segregation and because of this different segregation and different diffusion they have a different crystalline and different arrangement different pattern different shape and size so by this breakdown of that particular bio molecule it is also going to create the nano particles but generally this nano particles this bio polymers they are generally combined with the chemical oxidation enzymatic treatment to promote more and more lysis so generally what happen while doing preparation of this nano particles by the bio polymers like fat lipid carbohydrate starch we can also uh, have a particular enzymes and particular chemical compounds to create that chemical reactivity oxidation reduction hydrolysis so this enzymatic activity is going to break and also make a ph or that particular media through which these molecules are going to prepare or convert into massless particles so here the main action is because of this enzyme because these enzymes are the biocatalyst they are always involved in any chemical reaction without hampering their uh, any medicinal and any properties so they are just like a platform they just give a platform to solute and to produce and to make their synthesis of product so similarly for the synthesis of this uh, nano particles in case of bio polymers we can have this enzymes also for certain chemical reaction if there is no enzyme if there is no such chemical reaction so there is no synthesis of nano particles the physical property the chemical property of this previous one it is not going to be changed in some other modulation so this modulation this modification in that particular matter in that particular size of cell is again important for 
the breakdown of biopolymers. So this will give you a big change. Again, the structure of that particular. So again, what is the relation of homeopathy in this particular slide? Here you can see. Suppose if your medicine is prepared by some of these polymers, so they are also going to be synthesized in that in that particular nanostructures. And this particular nanostructure of this particular biomolecules are act on the dynamic plane. So this is the scope of homeopathy. Where is the homeopathy? Homeopathy exists in every matter. Homeopathy exists in every particle, in every sizes, in every solvent, in every solid, liquid, semi-solid, in every structures. Just the main idea is the process of pulverization, potentization, which is the uniqueness and the beauty of homeopathic pharmacy through we can synthesize this mass particle to massless particle. Now you can prove this on any living body by the process of your drug proving, homeopathic pathogenetic trial, a new guideline of drug proving. So you can prove this. You can see the sign and symptoms. You can see the changes after proving on this. So this is a scope of homeopathy in this system. It is not uh, just to prescribe medicine and just to record the symptom and just to showcase this. Again, it is very, very important that how the homeopathy, how these particles have the memory and they are going to act. If we know this, so definitely in future we will have a more scope in this nano science. Next, now you can see the pyrolysis. So generally it is another method to create this nanoparticles to turn a suitable precursor substance like methane, it is a gas, aerosol, volatile substance into solid particles by combustion or pyrolysis. So generally there should be a more pressure. So when the pressure is more, temperature is less, so ultimately these particles are not to be diffused. They come to each other, they come closer to each other and then they reduce the gap in between the intramolecular structure and then they form a solid particle. This solid particle, now they are generalized of the burning of this hydrocarbons or some other organic vapor to generate the shoot. <coughs> so this is a process of pyrolysis. So it is generally used for the gaseous, for the volatile substance. Generally, when we do HP, TLC and generally when we do uh, uh, this HP uh, gas chromatography, gas chromatography mass spectroscopy. So generally we recommended only the volatile substance. So somewhere when we suppose we have a mother tincture of calendula officinalis. Suppose I will give you one example. So this calendula officinalis now it is in liquid form. It is in this mother tincture concentrated hydroalcoholic base. Now this mother tincture should be heated at some certain degree of temperature. After heating, now you will have a, another vaporized form and another that is solid pulp structure. This is very minute structure. Now you have a two option. Either you can choose this very minute pulp structure and to create this nanoparticle by adding some other chemical compound. Second is by evaporating and converting this gaseous form, you can collect this and you can condense this gas into again solid form and this solid form is going to synthesize in some other structure. So these are the nanoparticles of the pyrolysis in the calendula officinalis mother tincture. So this is a method. How we can create this? We have to create this. We have to synthesize these structures. 
why we have to synthesize this to increase the efficacy of that particular particle in terms of treatment in terms of cure in terms of recovery in terms of immunity boost up so this is a example another you can see the condensation from plasma generally this nanoparticles generally they are also to be condensed by a different metallic structures like oxide carbides nitrites and they are going to vaporize as a solid precursor at different thermal plasma and after this condensation you can have a uh, that particular definite structure so it is in general regarding with the synthesis of the nanoparticles on other way you can see the radiolysis it is because of the radiation so through this method you are going to introduce the radiation to break down and to lysis of this molecules and through which you can synthesize some other structure so there is a variation and there is a change in the different radicals of this atomic and molecular structure so generally where is homeopathy again so in homeopathy in imponderabilia in natural sources artificial sources whenever medicines are prepared by the moonlight uh, sun and some other solar energy x rays beams of this magnetic field so they are again a process of lysis they are again going to synthesize this particles so these are the inclusivity of the homeopathy in the field of this nano science on other hand the wet chemistry generally it is regarding with the chemical process like potassium ferrocyanide potassium magnate chloride so these are all chemicals so they are to be used for the synthesis for the precipitation of this desirable matters so they are going to prepare in a very concentrated form by adding this reagent at that particular temperature of the solution that temperature should be maintained it should not be too much of high and low otherwise the bond is going to denatured in between the molecular and the atomic structure so it will change the whole uh, arrangement of this nano particles and they are going to add by a inert agents to affect their viscosity and diffusion rate so this is the wet chemistry it is regarding with the liquid substance only so previously we had discuss about the radiation we had discuss uh, discuss about the polymers and some other biomolecules this is a method through which we can introduce the various chemical compounds for synthesis of this structure now again where is the homeopathy as we know our medicines are prepared by this mercury group from this chloride and some other chemical reagent also so similarly while pulverization while potentization of this chemical compound we are also going to create and synthesize this nanoparticle by this chemical method so this is a homeopathy again it is scientific hello uh, doctor how many slides more uh, only two slides sir okay you can do and last now you can see the process of preparation so generally when we talk about pulverization so when the solute and solvent is going to mix in equal proportion then it forms the mixture after mixture after this pulverization force in acceleration it is going to convert in the emulsion after this emulsion it forms micro emulsion force in acceleration is your mechanical process after this super micro emulsion and ultra high dilution so what it is it is having all this mass to massless particle conversion by this force in acceleration by different forces and it possess electromagnetic wave memory water particles and the medicinal property so these are a uh, in general aspect of the potentization now the various nanoparticles in the chemical compound generally we use the silver silicon dioxide potassium calcium iron zinc silver is generally used for all organic and some other in organic compound and some other chemical process silver is very commonly used for synthesis of this nano structure zinc phosphorus boron zinc oxide these all are going to use for this synthesis finally these are our references 
through which we are going to conclude this session how this homeopathy and how the nanoparticles are going to synthesize and they are going to create so this is all about the today's topic that is nanoparticles and inclusivity of these structures in homeopathy thank you so much sir excellent presentation dr suraj singh badadia now i invite uh, uh, participants to have a chat with uh, uh, dr suraj singh you can also uh, ask your questions also i think uh, dr shaji kudit is there our vice president he is a person who is very much interested in uh, this kind of presentation uh, i invite uh, dr shaji kudit to begin the session Uh, good evening, all. Uh, thank you, Dr. Suraj Singh, to make this presentation. And um, uh, we all needed to become researchers and also get into study of these kind of topics so that the scientific establishment of homeopathy will be happening. It is a need of the hour and um, a lot of research possibilities are in front of us. So we need to explore and the future lies in homeopathy, lies with homeopathy. And these kind of researchers have a lot of things to contribute there also. So a lot of things to discuss. I am also interested in these topics also. So discovery of uh, nanoparticles in homeopathy will not prove the scientificity of homeopathy. We need to establish so many other things along with this. How these nanoparticles are able to act, function in a dynamic plane. And um, a few of the things Dr. Surja Singh already uh, narrated. So, it is also a little premature to discuss all the topics now because it is this uh, kind of researches are getting extended. So, new and new things are to be explored and established. So, I welcome and appreciate and congratulate Dr. Surja Singh for this presentation and uh, taking interest to study this matter. And we all can come together and uh, do a lot of things uh, uh, in addition to what is known today uh, so that this line of research will be further. Thank you once again, Dr. Surja Singh. Come again. Thank you, sir. And now I invite Dr. Marian Shashoda from Bolivia to speak. Thank you, Dr. Danish. Uh, good evening to all of you. It's always it's an honor to be here sharing with you all. Thanks, Dr. Suresh Singh. Amazing um, topic that you choose or present today, an excellent presentation with detailed information about nanoparticles, as well as the nomenclatures that we allow us to understand in deep the teaching of Dr. Hanneman and the importance of potentiation method as a method under specific steps explained in the organ and the treatise on chronic disease of Dr. Hanneman's. Years ago, cosmetics included zinc and titanium oxide in nanoparticles for better stand protection. At that time, there were criticisms of the products, indicating that they could generate changes in the DNA. In this line of thought, we could understand that the homeopathic remedy would also have this capacity, and we would open another area of action of the homeopathic remedy. To emphasize the memory of nanoparticles in relation to this topic, Gold nanoparticles have been generated in a liquid medium in Mexico in 2017. And in 2021, uh, metallic nanoparticles were being used mainly uh, because they have an excellent physical, chemical, and biochemical pro properties intrinsic to their size. Therefore, there is a boom in the use of these nanoparticles in various fields and recently due to, to the pandemic about coronavirus. That's important to emphasize that nanoparticles are very stable, so they can be stored as remedies for a long time, and they have better bioavailability, and their use in pharmacies 
environmentally friendly. So it was an amazing topic. Thank you very much. God bless you all. Thanks, Dr. Ganesh. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you, Dr. Mayer. Maria, now it's up to Dr. Boglin to say what are thanks to the session. Dr. Boglin from Malaysia, are you there? Please unmute. Hello, Dr. Boglin, are you there? Okay, uh, he's not responding. So I invite uh, Dr. Shaji to so say what are thanks to the session. Uh, hello. Yes. Okay. So with a single word, I am telling you thanks. Thank you. Um, so the time is already for the other session. So congratulations and thank you. And also all the listeners who listen to it. So I request all the participants to share our videos so that uh, these topics and the similar talks topics uh, where uh, where classes are taking place here will be uh, available and uh, utilized by people who are unable to attend the real session live. So with this, thank you all, including especially Dr. Surja, so, uh, Suraj Singh, Bedo, Bedoria. Thank you. Thank you so much.